says we're live. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. How is it going? Hey, Kaylee, how you doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing, Sarah? Oh, my gosh. So good. I cannot wait until we share what we just learned. Oh, my God. I know. So <laughs> I've literally been like juggling the kids all day and listening to this in one ear. And I'm like, holy shit, my mind is blown from this book. I know. I was like in the shower listening to it. So it's an audio book. And I was in the shower listening to it. I'm like, I need to get out of the shower and go start writing this stuff down. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> hey, as you guys are jumping on live, say hey below in the comments. But before you do that, if you just click above our heads here, you're going to see a little link there that allows us to see uh, your comments. So as you guys are jumping on, say hey below. Let us know where you're coming in from. How's the weather where you are today, Kaylee? Oh my God, it's gorgeous. It was gorgeous yesterday too. Crazy windy, but it's so nice out after uh, we hop off here sharing our knowledge. I'm going to head out into the nature and go for a stroll, I think. Oh, I love it. And that's something we're going to talk about today too. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, money mindset and how, get this. Let me know what you think about this because this blew my mind. Poverty is a disease. Think about it right? Like any other disease, when we don't feel well, our bodies show it, right? Like when you get a cold, you're stuffed up and you have a cough. When you know, you're, when your arm hurts, you, you usually go to the doctor. Or if you break a bone, you go to the doctor. When you aren't feeling well, your body lets you know. And it's this, it's the same way with poverty. When you're constantly looking at your bank account, wondering why it's not growing, you start to get fear and you start to feel sick and the, the what ifs, the what ifs come in. But the difference between the two is when you're not feeling well, you go seek help. You go to the doctor to find out what's wrong. So why is it when it comes to living an abundant lifestyle, we don't seek the help for it? All right. We just keep doing what we're doing in hopes that it gets better and hopes and do yeah. nothing for it. Yeah. So, um, when you're thinking, Kelly, when you think lack of money, do you feel, do you feel good? You're like, Oh, it's okay. I feel good. You know, no, you feel shitty. You feel like, mm -hmm. how can I, how can I get more money? Are we going to have enough to pay the mortgage? Are we going to have enough to pay for our growing kids? Do we have enough for groceries? How are we going to pay the insurance? Do we need to sell a car? Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Like shit. <laughs> yeah. So in the book that we're reading, it's called, um, what's it called? How to Attract Money. By Dr. Joseph Murphy back in the day, like early day. Um, he says that God does not want us to live in fear and go hungry. He wants us to be abundant. If you don't have money constantly circling in your life, there's something radically wrong with you. Let me say that again. If you do not have money constantly circling in your life, there's something radically wrong with you. Not the government, not your employer, not your mom, not your dad, not your grandma, not your kids. It's you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I took out of the, I don't know, it was probably about, 40 minutes into the book and it says, um, you know, life is a progression. So we're put here on earth um, to progress through life and we're here to grow. Like we're always growing every single day. Could be small, could be big. There's no difference between them. Um, but it says God is infinite. You literally go from glory to glory. Yeah. Right? And we're created in God's image and God is the highest creator. Therefore, you are here to create. Absolutely. But yeah. so many of us don't do that. Why? I'll tell you why. In 1800, 90% of the population worked for themselves. We come from history of people who had to fend for themselves. We built our own houses. We drove horse and, and buggy, we grew food, we had to hustle and work for shelter, food and heat. Okay, so in the 1800s, no, sorry, 1900s, in the early 1900s, we're not even that far ago, we worked for ourselves. 
But then we had this economic crisis in 1929 when the stock market crashed and we had the Great Depression. Government stepped in and created what's called social assistance. And we got comfortable. So in 1980, 90% of the population got comfortable. That's why there's so many people on unemployment and social assistance, because we can now walk into buildings that we don't own, buy things that we don't use, that we don't create ourselves. We can go into a grocery store, again, a building we didn't build or pay for. We purchased food from countries we'd never been in, and we got comfortable of it. We got lazy. It's not mm -hmm. fucking comfortable. We got fucking lazy as human beings. And now here we are um, in the most richest time in our history. Like our ancestors begged for this. And here we are. We're just squandering it. Yeah. That's so true. We literally have, if you think back in history, like you just said, we did everything for ourselves. And back then, people didn't complain. That's how you lived, right? You, you woke up and you worked for what you wanted. Yeah. That was life. Now, if you have to work for something that you want, people bitch and moan and complain. Oh my God, I don't want to do that. It's hard. It's too much work. It's like, we, like you said, we're in the richest time right now where we literally have life that we want at our fingertips and people would rather say, no, I'll just sit here and collect this because I don't have to fucking do anything. Yeah. But here's the thing. It's changing again. Because this is what we do. This Like history, they say history repeats itself, but we keep growing. Like we grow and we grow. We are, goal, we are goal seeking beings. That's why we are here. We are to learn and to grow, which we're going to get on that as well. But we... Keep praying that we go back, right? Like I hear, I hear constantly, I can't wait for things to go back. I can't wait till things go back to normal. Things are never going to go back to normal because we don't go back. You can only go forward. We can only learn and become wise from our past to create our future. We pray that we get better and we get stronger because let me tell you, I'm going to slap you with some fucking truth right now is that when it comes for us to retire, there's not going to be any government or money. Like there's not going to be any money. Look at what's happening. Wake up, like wake up and smell the fucking coffee. Now is your time. In 1929, when the economic crisis happened and we um, had that crash, more millionaires came out of that time than any other time. And what I want to say here was what he said was, the crash of 1929 was a psychological panic. Stay with me right now. It was fear seizing the minds of people everywhere. This is history repeating itself. The fear is not even your fear. You're not living your fear. This fear was ingrained in you before you were even born. It's not your fear. But here you are panicking. Instead of trying to move forward, what's that going to do for your kids and your future? Because now you're just programming them to do the exact same thing that was programmed into you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And going off of that, right? Like people wait for the worst possible time in their mind that's happening to them before they seek to do something different, right? Yeah. So it says in the book that pain tells you to seek, whether the pain be physical um, mental where you're in a place where you're like, I don't want to be here anymore, but, pa but pain in your life is God's alarm system, letting you know, to seek what it is that you need. Yep. So we are creators here on earth and we're here by our creator who's in heaven. And they say, um, as on heaven is on earth, everything we need is here. Yep. Right. We are creators. But why do we wait until we have the pain in our life to seek something more? Yep. Right. So he also says, if you whatever you give your blessing to. You're multiplying. So whatever your thoughts are in your mind, either be negative or positive, whatever you're giving your energy to and blessing. You're multiplying it. 
So if you see happy as hell people, they're that way because that's what they're choosing to give their blessing to over and over and over again, right? Whatever you do in life, if your competitor walks into the bank with you and they deposit, you know, you know, $100,000 into the bank and you're depositing maybe 20000 what is your, how are you responding to that? Are you thinking, oh shit, he's my competitor and he just deposited 10 times more than me. Are you going to be pissed off and bless that in a negative way? Or are you going to say, I'm so excited because I know what's out there. I know what's possible. Congratulations. Thank you for showing me what's even more possible than what I'm doing. Because when you multiply or when you bless something in your life, you're giving your energy to that and you're wanting more of it. Same thing goes with anything negative, right? Mm -hmm. If you have something come into your life that's not what you expected, I don't even look at those things now anymore as something that's happening to me. It's something that's happening for me because it's almost like a curveball. It's like thrown at you and you're, it's like a, you know, it's like something you need to be a judge of. I wrote down here too, too. everything that comes into your mind is you and you are the judge arriving at the courthouse of your mind in every situation. So you determine the outcome. Nobody else does. So if you look right now at all of the money in your life, whether it be positive, negative, or just money in general, what is the outcome that you're putting into existence through your thoughts? Let's talk about money for a second. So back in the day, we didn't have physical money. The way we paid was barter and trade, right? I'll trade you this cow for this sack of rice, right? That's what it was. It was barter and trade. We use items to pay for products and services. And now in our history, just in our history, it happens to be paper, right? So we put this value on paper, but the paper actually doesn't have any value to it. It doesn't have any value until you go to spend it on something. Then you give that paper a value. Yes, like April just said, money is going digital. Again, wake up. Watch what's happening in the world, right? Like we got crypto coming in right now. Everything's changing because this is what the world does. It changes and it changes quickly because we live in an orderly universe and the universe loves speed. Now, people say that money is evil, right? Have you ever heard that? Oh, money is evil. You know, money has been used to kill a man and and people will pay anything for money and money does is for the gangs and stuff like that, right? Again, you're putting a value on that money, but it's the way you look at it. It's your perspective because you can, you, you can use electricity to light your house, but you can also use electricity to kill a man. You can use water to quench your thirst, but you can also use water to drown a child, right? You can use fire to warm your house, or you can use fire to burn it down. It's your perspective on how you look at it. So if you're looking at people who are having success and having that wealth, and you're saying, oh, they're just lucky, or they were born with a silver spoon in their hand, or they have better self-esteem than me, or they're more driven than me, or I can never do what they have, Take a look at what you're doing. You are blocking yourself from ever creating wealth. You are blocking them. We call it manifestation. You can call it answering your prayers, magic, manifestation, growth, whatever you want to call it. But you're blocking that. Yeah. And you know what's so, so cool too? So Sarah and I talk a lot on, you know, coming from the end. So really, we're never here. And this may sound funny to people who have never studied mindset. But you are never really here, right? Nothing I ever said, actually exists. Yeah. Like what right. I just said is already gone and we're already in the future. Mm-hmm. So that's where you need to be living in the future. Once again, kind of sounds silly if you're new to mindset, but if not, it makes sense. So coming from the end, what are you moving towards? First of all, what do you want in your life? What are your goals and your dreams? You know, what do you value? That's what you're moving towards. Yep. And when you look at yourself, you know, every the the entire body of us 
is a vessel. You know, we in our vessel, we have different parts like wealth, love, um, joy, joy, other like a bunch of parts of vessels in our body. So are they all full? You can look within yourself right now and find areas that you have a lack mentality for where you're, you know, wanting more of it, so to speak, or mm -hmm. so to speak, whatever that saying is. So to speak. <laughs> um, so look within yourself. What is it that you feel like you might not be full of, yep. you know, and dig into that deeper and find that. And that's within you. It's not without, and it's not um, outside of you. Yep. So money, people are always like, oh, when I get a better job, I'll make more money. Really? Like how, how many jobs have you had? Are you making that much more money? And people think that money comes from their employer it comes through your employer, not from your employer. Mm -hmm. So talking about coming from the end, what your goal is, put a money goal in there. Who said you can't, <laughs> right? <laughs> what are you working towards? And feel it. So your feeling is the law and the law is feeling. So if you feel wealthy, if you have that feeling, that's what you're going to produce. If you have a feeling of emptiness, that's what you're going to produce, right? So the feeling that you're in constantly is basically called a vibration. And however that is set by you, in fact, that's what you're going to attract. So if you yeah, go ahead. Sarah. All right. I just love that you brought this up because I'm just having an aha moment. So you talk about vibration, right? Have you ever been in like a crappy mood and then all of a sudden you put music on mm -hmm. and you, you get into a good mood? Music is a vibration. It's a higher frequency vibration. But take a look at the different songs. Have you ever been gone through a breakup and then you listen to all those sad songs that make you cry your eyes out? And then, and then you listen to all those songs that like make you hate. And you're like, yeah, fuck you. I'm going to overcome this and screw you. And then you listen to all the pumped up music like, yeah, I'm totally better than this. Notice the different vibrations that you're on when you listen to music. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's the same thing with money. Right. When you get paid on payday, look at your vibration. Your vibration is so high. But then on Monday, after you finish paying off all your debt, you're back to being low. Right. Because now you're waiting two more weeks to get that high again. It's like Christmas. Right. We get so excited for Christmas. It's one day a year when all the presents are done and you're done cleaning up. That's it. It's done. Now you have to wait another 364 days to come back to that high, that vibration. Yeah. So We're what's your. Yeah. So what's your outlook on money? Like, how do you feel about money? Because however you feel about money is what you're going to attract. And just like Sarah said, you, everybody listening right now can relate payday. You're fucking pumped up. You're buying the things you want. You're paying your bills. And then once that's done, you're like, oh, I can't do anything for another week until I get paid. Yeah. And do you actually do anything with that money? I was listening to, oh my gosh, who was I listening to? Oh, I listen to so many. Anyways, I was listening to somebody and they said, um, we don't pay with money. You actually pay with debt, right? Because the government is so in debt to other countries right now that we're paying off their debt. So when you actually, when you use your debit, you're paying debt. So you're never actually paying with money. And that really opened my eyes. So but here's the thing. What uh, Joseph Murphy talked about, God is the source of my supply. That supply is my supply now. His riches flow to me freely and abundantly. I am forever conscious of my true worth. I give my talents freely and I'm wonderfully divinely compensated. Thank you, Father. How good is that? Now, right? So I grew up in a Catholic household. I didn't really study it. I'm more spiritual. I really love, you know, the Buddhist teaching and karma and things like that. And I'm really enjoying the spiritual root of that. Uh, but growing up in a Catholic household, we always said our father, and I didn't understand the, um, um, our father who art in heaven, thy will be done, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I didn't understand that phrase until I read the book, UT can be prosperous. Everything that we desire in heaven, this is our heaven. This is heaven. You are living in heaven. I used to say, this is hell. I'm living in hell. 
It's because I had a shitty mindset and I didn't understand that everything that I desire is here and in my control and that I'm a powerful creator and I am the divine creator and I create the life that I want, right? People look at me and they're like, you're lucky. Go watch my story. My book's coming out in the, in the fall and I'm writing an, another book, a memoir. Read that book. You're going to see that my life wasn't all rainbows and Skittles, right? But I work at it. I figure out what the fuck works and what doesn't. And one mm -hmm. of my mantras is money is forever circulating freely in my life. And there is always a divine surplus. And I repeat it. If you were to open this door here and I would open it, you would see my bank statement, which states a million dollars. And you would see all of my money affirmations, how I am abundantly wealthy and money flows to me easily. And I deserve money and money. I love money and money loves me. Right? Because when you're constantly thinking that there's no room for fear and lack you are in control yeah <laughs> i love you sarah <laughs> oh my gosh but um it's so true like when you think of like not just money your entire life every single situation in your life this is exactly what we're talking about right mm -hmm. if you put your focus on what's not there you'll never have it you know i I was a heavy shopper. So my, I would get paid and be gone because I was so depressed. And I thought the more things I had, the happier I would be. But the more things I purchased, the less money I had and the more depressed I was. And I became in this, this vicious cycle, right? So I was constantly buying things. And then I had a realization about two weeks ago, I'm standing in the kitchen and I'm looking at Donnie and I said, shit, if I die tomorrow, you have a lot of shit you have to go through. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for all those $300 place settings that I purchased from Pier One. <laughs> Don't eat those after I die. But like I kept thinking about that. I kept thinking about my house needs to be perfectly clean. Well, if I die, like it's not, it's not going to be clean. Right? It'll, so still be gonna, there. Yeah. it'll still be there. Right? This office will still be here. Right? Because we are the creator, not, not this house that I live in. If we were to take everything out of it, it's just a house. If you were to take all the employees out of your work, it's just a building. If you were to take everybody out of a hotel, you just have a hotel. You don't have a, you don't have a business, right? So knowledge is the spiritual road to riches of all kinds. And I didn't understand that until I started studying it this year. The secret of the ages are locked up in books, right? The secret of the ages are locked up in books. So the day after tomorrow is my favorite movie of all time because I love the weather. Like it fascinates me. But when they started burning the books and the librarian's like, what are you doing? You can't burn the books. And he's like, what are we going to do to heat ourselves? Right. And then that one guy, he clutches on to the first Bible ever created. I was like, that would be me. I would just grab my books, burn all the rest. But the ones that changed my life, I need those because when all shit goes to hell, I'm going to have to come back and redo my life again. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And it's so, it's so powerful, right? Like, especially with being on the topic of money, like it's never, people think when they have a goal to be, you know, wealthy and they want money, it's like a lack mentality because they have the, the thought attached to it as it's greedy, it's selfish to want more. Um, but you know, I've talked to a lot of people this past year. I've talked to people that have nothing. I've talked to people that have everything. And I have to tell you some people that are right in the middle that had that, you know, have enough. They're happy. Some people that have everything you could imagine in life that drove the vent Bentleys that lived in mansions that literally had a pocket full of money. They could buy whatever they wanted still weren't happy yeah so money does nothing for you until you put it to something that gives you the value from it like my goal i plan to be the first multi-millionaire in my family me too not because i want the fancy things not because i want to be like look at me and my mansion of a house and my yacht and my Rolls Royce like that's not what I want money for I want money to make my life memorable through experiences yeah but I'm also getting a yacht <laughs> like, yeah yeah because yeah. I can because right? you can but yeah. I mean I don't I'm not getting it 
just to get it and be like, look at me. Like, yeah, yeah get a, get a, have a yacht and experience it and just yeah. sail the ocean for a month if you want to, you know, hire a driver exactly. and do that. The freedom, right? Yeah. Money is not evil. Like it's not. But we believe it is because we live in a poverty mindset. We live with that disease every single day that, you know, middle people are like middle class. There's no middle class. There's no middle class. There's poverty and rich. That's it. If you have massive debt and credit card debt, that's poverty, right? Because freedom is true richness. And the student of the laws of the mind knows and believes absolutely that regardless of the e economic situation, depression, war, or other conditions, that he will always be amply supplied regardless of what form the money may take. I'm going to say that again. What form the money may take. Because right now in our era... It's paper. Back then, it was gold and silver. Before that, it was cattle and livestock. Before that, it was people. It was women. They would sell their women. That's where wives came from. They would sell their women for a piece of land. Right? Our future is digital. So true. There is always a divine surplus. Wealth is a state of consciousness. That's all it is. It really is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that, Stacy. Mm -hmm. um, so I wrote down too. It's um, here. It says, "You cannot solve a problem with the same mind that created it. You cannot attract different experience without changing your mind first. Right. So if you're in a place in your mind where, um, you know, you created a problem." You can't fix it with the same mindset. And yeah, I'm going to say you created the problem because you did. Everything yeah. in your life that shows up as a result, which you're living, was created here first, right? It and entered let, your mind. Let's be a little fair. Not all of it was because of you. A no, lot of yeah. it was passed down to you. Mm -hmm. A lot of it was passed down to you. So you, you may wish to send your kids to the fancy schools. You may wish to give them the best homes and buy their cars and give them money when they need it because you didn't have that growing up. So now you're trying to make up for it, but you're not doing them a favor. Favor. You're actually doing them, doing them a disservice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you want them to experience the best with the nicest thing so they can learn and to appreciate beauty... What about you? What about you? When is it your time? Because your parents wanted that for you and it didn't happen. So now you're passing it on. You're, it's called a paradigm. It's your belief systems, a multitude of habits that you pass on to your children. So when does it stop? When does it stop? When does the financial abundance start to happen? When you decide. Because I'm talking to people who are in their 70s dependent on their children and grandchildren for the basic needs of necessities of life. I'm talking to people in their 50s and 60s who will never be able to retire because they still have their mortgage that they keep remortgaging over and over again because they can't afford to live. And unfortunately, when they do retire or worse, end up on disability because they are forced out of work, they will actually be downsizing in their life and won't be able to continue the same lifestyle. If there is a financial lack in your life, do something about it. There's bajillions. I'm not going to say millions. There's a bajillions way to make money. I had a man. He was 65 years old. He would come and clean up the dog shit from my backyard, and he charged me 60 bucks. He was the happiest man in the world. He would go to a couple of houses a day and make a couple hundred bucks cleaning up dog shit. Go clean houses. People who clean houses make a, make a huge living. You can. There's billions of businesses online that you can do. Literally think of something and you can make an income from it. Let me ask you something, Kaylee. Why is it going to an office or going to a work going to work different from starting a business online or starting your own business? What's the difference? The the difference is the belief system that's been ingrained in our minds over the years. That's the difference. Because people feel secure 
from going to a job rather than starting a job of their own. That's what I think, right? You have um, security if you go to a government job. Let me tell you, the biggest lie is that because what the hell happened this past year? People that thought they were going to be secure in a government job forever were sent home packing. Yep. A lot of my friends. Listen, a salary is a drug that they give you when they want you to forget about your dreams. So you are good. trading. It's very easy to stay in that world when you're doing a task, the same task over and over again, and getting a little bit of pay. You become comfortable. You do them well, maybe. Maybe you'll get a raise. I remember one time they put a they put a uh, uh, a two year freeze on our salary. Yet I still had to do more and more work every year. Mm hmm. And people do it. Yep. People do it their whole fucking life. I yep. talked to somebody who worked in a casino because it was okay money. From the time that she was, I think, twenty four, she's gonna be sixty. Oh my she God. has never liked a day in her life going to her job, but because at the end of two weeks, she got a paycheck with money on it to just live, not even to live the way she wants to. She did it your whole, almost, almost your whole fucking life. You did miserable because the money was at the end of two weeks, just so you could do it again every single day, maybe get to retirement and then think oh, now I can live. You know, we have a, a girl that we um, are with every single day, Alicia, in our community, and she took took care of a man, and he said, I worked hard my whole life to make money just so I could be here and you could take care of me, and I didn't get to do anything I wanted to. And he's like, if, go travel, do things. Do it now. Yeah. And so like she if said. That, if that doesn't open your eyes, like... That's what we don't do, right? People give us their experiences and their opinion every single day. And it's the older people that we need to listen to and the fact that they're telling you, I worked my ass off my whole life just to make money, just so I could live to retirement, to, to do the things I want and actually live. But now that I worked my ass off my whole life just to live, I'm sitting here you're taking care of me and I couldn't do anything. Yep. Not even their family taking care of him. She was taking care of him. A stranger was taking care of him because he couldn't do it. And so now here she is living out her dream life. I remember I've known Alicia for a while. She was in my wedding. Um, met her probably eight years ago now. And um, I remember when she left her job. She, I don't even think she was 30 yet. And she made a decision and they do travel a lot when, when we're allowed to travel, they do travel a lot because he said, go travel because people who are dying, they'll never tell you what they did. They'll tell you what they didn't do. They'll tell you the regrets. Right. Yep. So what, what do you want your life to look like? You know, you know what, when I, I, I worked for the government, I did. And, um, when Donnie and I, and Donnie's my husband, for those of you who don't know, he also worked for the government. When we left, um, people are like, well, what about benefits? What about your pension? What about, what about benefits? And I'm like, first of all, I'm healthy and benefits are also a drug to keep you there. It's, but you still pay for them. Look at your pay stubs. You still pay for them. The taxes that you pay here in Canada pays for your health care. If I'm in the right mind, I used to be so sick. I used, I couldn't even tell you how many times I called in sick because I, my job was making me sick. Because my mind wasn't right and I was stressed. But now that I've, I haven't been sick, I'm not going to wood, in over two years, probably close to three, not even with a common cold. And you won't be. And yeah. you know what? T talking about talking about benefits, I can give you an example. So I worked in a government job. I worked in a group home. I had good benefits. Um, I went on mat leave with my first son. And I had to pay benefits while I was off because if I didn't and I went when I went back, I wouldn't be able to keep them. I was off mat leave for a year and a half and I paid over three grand in benefits and I used two massages out of them. Yep. And people think they're going to stay in a cushy government job because it's good benefits. 
Yep. You know what? There's benefit companies out there that if you need benefits, you can pick a package that suits your needs and pay for just that. People don't realize when they have benefits with their job, you're not even using them and you're paying for them. Paying for them. And you know, um, it's funny that you say that because now that I'm uh, an incorporated business, I, my neighbor's in insurance and I asked him, I said, you know, how much would it cost for Donnie and I to have benefits? And he said, it would be cheaper for you just to pay to go to the dentist. He's like, you'll pay out of your ass. So that's what we do. You gotta go to the dentist. I earn enough money that I can do that. When you earn a lot of money and you have money constantly flowing in, you don't worry about benefits because you have the money there to pay for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was one of the biggest things that I was asked when I, when I was deciding to leave my government job and work for myself was, but you have such good benefits. You're going to give benefits up. I said, well, Will has them if I really need them. But I don't need benefits. I've never used them. Yep. It was full time for six years. Did I need the benefits? No. I used them because I had them. But did I need them? No. Yep. I remember trying to max them out. We're paying for them, babe. Let's go. You need some hearing aids. I'm paying for them. I'm going to get all these glasses. I'm paying for them. Let's go for massages because I'm paying for them. And yeah. I was more stressed trying to use them up than actually enjoying the massage. During the massage, I'm like, okay, hey, how many more of these do I have to do before they're up? Like, <laughs> so <laughs> funny, right? <laughs> but that just that it's a mindset, right? And it's tricking you to stay where you are just because it keeps you comfortable. So, I mean, Sarah and I are loving this book. We could, Sarah has like 10 pages of notes. Well, uh, I'm going to give you guys my favorite affirmation that I got from it. And then yeah. we'll wrap it up. We'll let you guys go. Um. Oh, this quote, I have to tell you about this quote. So for those of you who are living in fear right now, which most of you are who are watching, fear is the signal for action. It gives you the signal to move towards faith. That was my biggest aha. That is an aha. Yeah. Wow. But my, um, my favorite... Uh, affirmation and write this down guys grab a pen and paper or come back and pause it here at around 37 minutes um, is money is forever circulating freely in my life and there's always a divine surplus my favorite one I'm mm -hmm. going to write that over and over again a hundred times a day that one's so good yeah well Kaylee I know we'll be back because we only finished the first chapter in this book and uh, we got a couple more to go I ordered the book as well so I can study that because you know that you guys know how much I love to read because the secret of the ages are locked up in books and if you want to be wealthy you got to study study or just listen to us because we're studying yeah. and we're sharing it all with you so listen tomorrow we're going to be talking about um uh, freedom is mindset so those of you who are in Wealth Whispers, um, it'll be 8 p.m. Uh, in this group under events. You can see the event. Those of you who are not in there, head over to the group. Um, we start at 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow and Tuesday. We're going to be talking a lot about confidence, freedom as a mindset, and how you can earn more money. Because that's a, essentially that's what it is that, that everybody wants, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So fun talking with you today, Sarah. I'm going to go yeah. listen to the next chapter. This is so too. damn good. <laughs> awesome. We'll talk with you guys later. Love you. See ya.